All right, everyone. Good evening and welcome to our Monday night amazing wellness warrior call. And I'm excited that we are all here together tonight. Um, what a great day it is, not just because it's my birthday, but it's just a great day. Spring is in the air and I just, I feel something. Do you guys feel it? Like something is coming, something big is happening. I just feel it all over. So I'm excited for tonight and for our guest of honor to be here. And for those of you who don't know Kirsty or who are listening to this recording, Kirsty is our director of Zalevo Labs and product education here at Zalevo. Um, she has been, um, she comes from a family of formulation. Um, she's been around it a lot of her life and it's exciting to see all the fun things that she and her team come up with. Um, she is an author, a speaker, a trainer. She has over 3,000 audios and videos combined um, all around nutrition and science. And she has a passion for helping others and help them achieve their optimal health, which I love. I love that she's a mother of three amazing children who I have grown to love over the past 20 years of knowing Kirsty, and Alexa, Tyler, and Zach, and the incredible, he's not a husband yet, but he's the man in her life, and we call him Hot Bob. So everybody, welcome to the call, um, and we're going to welcome her with everyone clapping and doing whatever, but I love the topic of our call tonight. It's around the epidemic of stress, anxiety, and depression. And with so much of this going on, even now, so let me just back up a little bit. I So before COVID even hit, um, the, um, oh, what's his name? Like over all the United States, the, the doctor, what's his name? Anyway, he Thank came and spoke. Okay, so he came and spoke to a bunch of us at a Christian conference, and he said that the number two epidemic in the United States is loneliness. And then COVID hit, and I'm sure it shot to number one. I don't know that for sure, but so many people have this, you know, just so many disorders that are coming out around stress, anxiety, and depression. So everybody, welcome to the call with all your hand gestures. Um, our guest of honor tonight, Kirsty Cody. We love you, Kirsty. Thank you. Man, I love you. I am so excited yeah. to be here. And look, I have on my shirt and my necklace that Kirsty gave me today. So I'm dressed in Kirsty attire today. Thank you. How, how perfect is rainbows for Jill? Does I anyone love it. agree? Right, right. Because she's just like a ray of sunshine and a little heart necklace because she's just like one big juicy heart. She cares about everybody. And um, Jill, happy 50th. We're so Thank crazy you. about you. You're amazing. You're such an amazing leader. And um, and here you are on your birthday, 50 years, and uh, and you're here working your buns off and and being with us tonight. So thank you for that. Um, and by the way, do you have your little card, your birthday card? Oh, it's right over there. Do you want me to go grab it? Yes, yes, because okay. here's the deal. I put in, go ahead and go get it. I'll share okay. with them. So um, in, in Jill's birthday card, we did a little bit of calculating. So she is 50 years young. She's got 50 more years at least, right? Because we're all going to be fueling our bodies with crazy, amazing stuff. And we're just getting started, right? We have 10 master formulations and trust me, there's more to come. But Jill, how many days have you been alive? I've been alive for 18,250 days. And how many hours? 438,000 hours. How many seconds have you been alive? I don't even know how to do the numbers. It's 26, comma, what is that? 26 million, a million, million. 280,000 seconds. That's a lot of seconds. That is a lot of seconds <laughs> in five decades. Holy I smoke. love it. I know. I just thought that was fun because if you really uh -huh. think about it, like every, because you're breathing in and out all the time, right? Your breathing patterns could be like, every few seconds, it's like in and out just to think about like, you know, you've been alive for 26,000 or 26 million seconds. Uh, that's a lot of breaths that you've taken in that time. And I just think it's amazing. It's amazing. So, um, 
Everybody, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. We've got a lot to cover. And I want to leave time too at the end to just, you know, have a discussion because we're here. There's people that are listening in for themselves and there's people that are listening in for the sake of others. And we are, we'll deliver some goods as far as stats and some information and data, take mad notes, and then let's chat about it because there might be something that you can tweak or do differently uh, for yourselves or your loved ones. But this is a very, very serious topic tonight in the sense that it is uh, an epidemic. Um, when it comes to stress, stress is connected to all degenerative disease, all chronic illness. It is. So the, the effects that stress, chronic stress has on the body um, is, is profound because when you are stressed out, you've got hormones or chemicals uh, that are produced in the body that help your body in that acute state of stress. Uh, and, and they come in the form of cortisol and they come in the form of um, epinephrine or adrenaline. And you have all these little glands, these little organs in your body that whether it's your thyroid or it's your pituitary or it is your adrenal glands, and they manufacture specific types of bi, um, biological chemicals, whether it's serotonin or it's dopamine or it's adrenaline or it's, um, it's cortisol or it's thyroid. And all of these little glands in producing these chemicals, these chemicals are released out into the bloodstream and their job is to make it to the cells. Their job is to help the cell with its biochemical processes. And so going back to stress, when you're stressed, your, your adrenal glands produce beautiful quantities of cortisol and epinephrine, or also known as adrenaline. And these two chemicals actually help to uh, equip the body uh, to be able to move through that stress. For instance, whether it's to vasodilate, you will vasodilate uh, so that your muscles can actually get more blood flow more oxygen so that you're powered up so that you can have that fight on and run from the tiger or this is these these hormones are what allows a human being to be able to lift a car off of their loved one in an, a scene of an accident it is it is otherwise humanly impossible to do so but how is it that people have you're super gonna strength go somewhere. no you're gonna go somewhere else because i'm gonna be talking um, in times that are, are massively critical and it's called hormones. It's these hormones excrete out and all of a sudden charge the body up. Um, what isn't good is chronic production and release at higher quantities over long periods of time. So it's acute stress is totally fine and it's very natural. It's the chronic day in and day out stress that is so damaging to the body. And one of the main components to chronic stress is an inflammatory response in the body. And it's, for, it's because of the increased amount of hormones or chemicals that are being produced in the body to help the body through these, these chronic stress moments. Um, if inflammatory response is heightened all the time, all the time, what's happening? Your cells are getting crowded out. And if your cells and tissues are crowded by unnecessary inflammatory response or water retention, you better believe that there's going to be pressure on your vascular system, on your cardiovascular Let's actually just take a step, a little pause here on that. If inflammatory response drives up into the core of your body, it's creating more pressure on your organs, your arteries, your aorta, your blood vessels, capillaries, um, all of the piping in your body, it becomes crowded and pressure in, increases. And it could lead to high blood pressure because there's such a serious inflammatory response going on in the body. With that, um, if you drop the inflammatory response, it takes that pressure off of the vascular system and of course the heart because it's the heart that has to pump harder in times 
of inflammatory situations. Uh, it, it takes the pressure and the stress off the heart too. So if you can manage your stress and manage your inflammatory response and manage your, your hormones that are being produced in your body, you'll depuff, you will feel lighter, healthier, and most importantly, your cells will become less uh, um, uncrowded, so to speak, allowing for cells to function better, absorb nutrients better, and absorb hormones better. So that's the stress component. And, and do we live in a stressful world? Boy, do we. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how many conversations I've had over the last couple of years where people feel uncertainty, massive uncertainty for the first time in their entire adult life. Um, they feel hopelessness. They don't know what the next decade is going to look like or five years. They don't feel bullish about the future. They, they, don't, they aren't even certain about their jobs you know, that create income so that they can feed their family and, and pay their bills. There are a lot of things that people are, are feeling based on what's taking place in the world and in our nation and state by state, and even within our own households and within our own families, relationships. Um, so there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot that feeds into the stress. I mean, just think about it. What we worry about today is so different than what people used to worry about back in the 1700s, 1800s, even early 1900s, because life was so much more simple. Was it easier? Heck no. I mean, there's nothing more easy than being able to get into your shower and go potty, you know, in your bathroom when they didn't use, they, nobody had indoor plumbing and a toilet to flush back in the day, right? I will take the indoor plumbing. I don't know about you guys, but my point is, is that our, what our worries are these days, it's just so different than what it used to be back in the day, but it was more simplistic uh, ways of, of living. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, two things that are massively funneling into um, the state of depression and anxiety are social media and the environment in which we're in. And it, like I said, it could be home or it could be a work environment. But I want to share some things because stress dovetails straight into depression and anxiety and mental illness. Um, and, and we'll talk about why in just a second, but, um, just in the last two years during our COVID pandemic years and moving into a new presidency and a new, just a whole new game, right? It, it has jumped by 8.5% for a total of 27.8% of people in North America are depressed. That's nearly one in three people. You know, it's, 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 you know, I mean, 27.8%, that's almost 28%. That's crazy. Um, mental illness is in about 19% of all adults in the United States throughout North America. And women are nearly twice as likely than men to be diagnosed with depression. And what we're seeing based on your age bracket, so write this down on whatever might fit with you or your loved one. Any kind of, um, of um, depression, I'm gonna give you the calculation. A, a mild case of depression, the largest group of people that are suffering are 18 to 29 year olds. For moderate depression, it's about 45 to 64 year olds, but the most severe depression is 45 to 64 year olds. That's, that's the, that's the, um, it's the people that are basically right leading up into baby, baby booming years or right after the baby boomers. Why, and you got to ask yourself, why is that? You know, these are the moms and dads that are having the kids that are suffering from mild depression that are 18 to 29 years old. It's crazy. Um, so we talked about social media and environment absolutely funneling into that. Um, but it's also illness. Illness takes a huge 
hit on the body, specifically the gut. And what's really interesting too, here's another fact, is that the further north that you live, the more that depression steps into play. And the more that depression steps into play, the more that substance abuse steps into play. Alcoholism, drug abuse, suicide rates. And, and the, the, the um, latitude line on the, on the planet that is the break from happy versus increased depression, anxiety, um, and, and stress and suicide is latitude that sits right on Flagstaff, Arizona. So if you live north of Flagstaff, Arizona, you've got challenges based on geographic, not just necessarily other factors like mental health and, and nutrition, which we're going to talk about too. So uh, you will, if you live north of Flagstaff, Arizona, and the further north that you climb, especially into Canada and of course, Alaska, then, then you really, really have to take extra steps and extra precautions to protect yourself based on where you just simply live, which is very interesting. Um, and studies show hands down that poor food choices contribute to depression. As a matter of fact, the majority of depression can be lent to mindset, outside influences like social media and environment, and eating poorly. There's a smaller percentage where it's actually clinically diagnosed depress, depression where it requires medication. As a matter of fact, I remember this was years and years ago, a doctor friend of mine who's an expert in this field said that only 5% of clinical diagnoses of depression and anxiety are actually because that is the case, whether it's a genetic disposition, something's going on genetically in the body, or they've got some sort of mental illness that funnels straight into that. The other 95% have influence on their, their depression and anxiety. And interestingly enough, nutrients, as we say, because poor choices in food contribute to depression, it's the nutrients within foods or the lack thereof that funnel in to depression, anxiety, and suicidal uh, states. Now, here's the question of the night. And that is, if, if nutrition or lack of nutrients is funneling in to a poor state of health, depression, anxiety, uh, increased stress, um, then what diet might you be on? Because when you're dieting, what are you doing? When you're dieting, you're counting calories and you're reducing the quantities of food and you're just thinking, oh, yay, this is great. I'm going to cut back on eating. I'm going to lose the weight. I'm down 15 pounds. I'm looking good. But all of a sudden, because you've cut back on food, your nutrients therefore have also been cut back on. And that type of restrictive dieting leads to deficiencies. And we're gonna go through a list of nutrients that are imperative for healthy mood and well being to be able to tackle some of these um, uh, uh, situations, health situations that we're dealing with today. So let's go ahead and dive into some of these specific nutrients and other facets that you guys can take action on to be able to blaze through and to shift and change uh, your life when it comes to stress and uh, anxiety and depression. Um, now, let's, let's focus on the, nu the nutritional aspect of things. Again, the most common nutritional deficiencies that are seen in patients that have mental disorders, again, whether it's bipolar, bipolar uh, conditions, schizophrenia, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, are, write these down, 
omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. Pretty much the full spectrum of B vitamins, minerals and trace minerals, and amino acids. Amino acids are precursors to neurotransmitters. And many of the neurotransmitters within your brain, inside of the brain are made up of amino acids. So if you're waking up in the morning and you are eating a piece of toast or a bagel, you are missing out on material that is precursors to neurotransmitting activity in the brain that allow for healthy levels of dopamine and serotonin to be produced in the brain. So the neurotransmitter of dopamine is made from amino acids such as tyrosine and neurotransmitters uh, uh, serotonin is made up of tryptophan, both of which are found in your ultra thirties. Now, like as mentioned, so the, so the amino acids, they convert into neurotransmitters. Some of the other really, really important amino acids is not only the tryptophan, the tyrosine, but also phenylalanine and methionine. Those four amino acids have been clinically and scientifically studied and proven to help with mood disorders, including depression. Uh, so if you're skipping out on amino acid supplementation, or you're not getting your protein in for the day, uh, you're, you might be in trouble. You, you just might be in trouble. It, these amino acids, according to scientists, have antidepressant type effects. So make sure you're getting your amino acids. Is chicken and fish fantastic? Sure, it's great. But you have three times the power in an ultra 30 shake versus a chicken breast on utilization of amino acids three times the power based on bioavailability in ultra 30 versus chicken or fish. That's huge. So talk about good quantities of the tryptophan, the tyrosine, the phenylalanine, and the methionine. So um, those are very, very important. Now let's move on to vitamins. There's 13 vitamins out there of which many are in the B family and specifically B1, B2, B6, B9 and B12 are critical for mental health. So B1, B2, B6, B9, and B12, all of which you're getting in Ultra 30. I love it. And in a form that's highly, highly bioavailable, whether it's folate, methyl tetrahydrofolate, or it's methylcobalamin, these are methylated Bs that, go, that are readily available versus your body not being able to absorb some of these very important vitamins. Uh, next on the list, minerals. You've got four different sources of minerals inside of your Zalevo Master Formulations, three of which exist in the Ultra 30. From, and and I'm, I'll list out the most critical minerals and trace minerals for good mental health. And again, this has been scientifically studied, okay? And that would be calcium, sodium, potassium. Those are all uh, mega, mega minerals or macro minerals. And then your micro are going to be chromium, iodine, iron, lithium, selenium, and zinc, all of which are in your ultra 30. And also to magnesium, I failed to mention magnesium. Magnesium, according to study, that if you take magnesium, only 125 to 300 milligrams of magnesium a day, scientists have discovered that you will have a rapid recovery from major depression in about seven days. That's how important even just one mega uh, mineral or macro mineral could be in your body. So 
um, we've, we've got you covered there as far as these minerals and trace mineral components. Next is omegas. Now we've got healthy fats inside of the, the, um, the ultra 30, which is fantastic, but I'm speaking, speaking specifically to omegas, which omegas, it's a different facet of fats. It's a fatty acid that normally come from fish. That's the most popular source is, is salmon. But we love concentrated omegas because you can get higher levels of two different types of acids that are present within omega-3s. And that would be EPA and DHA. So if you're looking for an omega, because um, we currently don't have one here with Zalevo, look for, these are the things to look for triple distilled, Nordic sourced fish, coming from Nordic sourced fish, high in EPA and DHA. And it can be a combination of three and six and even some nine. You could even have some seven in there, but really you're, you're looking for omega-3, omega-6. And you're looking, if, if you or someone that you love is needing omegas because of anxiety, depression, the recommended no space, a dosage based on scientist uh, discoveries is about 1500 to 2000 milligrams a day. And they've done further studies on upper levels of maybe 3000 milligrams per day. And they said there's absolutely no difference between a dose of 3000 milligrams versus a dose of 1500 to 2000 milligrams. There's not more benefit. So more is not better at this point. Um, so uh, huge, this is huge, huge, huge. Um, because it's not only going to um, omegas are known to help with the in, inflammatory response and driving inflammation down in the body. Fantastic for brain because your brain is made up of mostly fatty acids. So um, you're going to find multiple benefits with omegas if you're not currently supplementing. Um, Nature's Bounty sells one at Costco that is fantastic. It's a big bottle and um, people seem to love it. Uh, so go that route or do some research and find something on, um, on Amazon or something like that, right? So get yourself some omegas. Next on the list is probiotics. And this is such a pivotal thing, just as much as, it, as amino acids are. Because when you eat a bad meal and it affects your gut microbiome, you feel discomfort, bloated, gassy, maybe diarrhea, right? There's one bad meal can disrupt your entire stomach and your microbiome. Just think about that. But also illness, whether it's COVID or it's flu, uh, your gut microbiome takes a hit every time there's something major. Stress, high levels of stress affect the gut. So any changes in your life or your diet absolutely drive imbalance in your gut microbiome and increase the inflammatory response, which can affect the brain. Isn't that amazing? It can affect the brain and it can cause symptoms of anxiety and depression, temporary. So um, a troubled gut sends signals to the brain, just as a troubled brain can send signals to the gut. So mind over matter, matter over mind, right? Pretty interesting. So a person's stomach or intestinal distress, it can lead to uh, anxiety and depression. So you really, really want to care for your gut. And research shows that daily probiotic supplementation seem to help significantly with anxiety and depression in patients that have anxiety and depression. So take your probiotics. There are two strains that are really, really important for, for mood, mental health, and that would be your streptococcus strain, which is inside of daily, as well as paracasei, which is also inside of daily. So take your daily, daily. <laughs> Next, 
is adaptogens. These are, this is a class of botanicals, a class of herbs that grow in some of the most harsh um, environments. And they're stubborn. They are stubborn plants that can, can withstand droughts um, and what they've been used for thousands of years. Uh, they're very safe. They're non-toxic. And inside of your Fortitude 85, you've got an array of adaptogens that help the body cope and deal with the effects that stress has on the body. And so look at Fortitude 85 as your internal armor, uh, so to speak, on armoring yourself and equipping yourself with um, the tools to combat the harmful effects of stress. And I wanna speak to one botanical that's in here, one adaptogen, and it is the sensorial ashwagandha, the organic sensorial ashwagandha. This ashwagandha is patented it is the, both the leaf and the root, and it is loaded with bioactives. And as a matter of fact, it is the most potent ash ashwagandha on the face of the planet. It comes with 12 clinical studies. This one little mat, beautiful herb, this one ingredient, 12 clinical studies. And based on a study on the Hamilton anxiety scale, it showed that it reduced overall stress by 62%. Four capsules a day, guys not five, not six, but four capsules a day. Also in, in helps the, um, the body's ability to go to sleep by 70%, reduces fatigue by 53%, lowers cortisol levels by up to four times, which then in turn drops your inflammatory biomarkers by two times. It's amazing stuff. And you have this in four tiny little capsules that you take every single day. So um, a wonderful addition. And then last but not least, surprise, surprise, nobody would have ever guessed this, but in our liposome technology, we have plant phospholipids. And one of the phospholipids that we use is phosphatidylserine. And phosphatidylserine is clinically studied and proven to absolutely impact depression and anxiety. And you've got liposome ABT technology with this beautiful phospholipid called, called phosphatidylserine in multiple master formulations. So we've covered a lot from probiotics, adaptogens to uh, phospholipids, omegas, minerals, vitamins, proteins, but this is just kind of, think about it. I, I was just telling uh, Gina, we had a, a call today earlier and we were talking about her sweet mama. And I said, listen, the, the older that we get, the more that sometimes our mechanisms just kind of shut off. Like we don't feel as hungry anymore. We never thirst. Uh, elderly people pretty much never have thirst. They only, only drink maybe on rare occasions. So um, in, in sharing some thoughts with Gina, it's like drinking isn't necessarily like, oh, you know, I just feel like some water. I feel like, you know, I, I need water. When those mechanisms slow down later in life, water consumption becomes a task, just like brushing your teeth or showering every day. You have to make sure you're getting your quota in, whether you feel thirsty or not. And it's the same thing with nutrition. You've got to guard and make sure that you're getting all of these little macro and micro uh, nutrients into the body. It would be like if you wanted to build a house and you are the general contractor, what materials do you need to build a house? You need, you need concrete as your foundation. You need steel beams. You need tons of two by fours to construct the walls and to build up vertically, right? You need tubing, plumbing, wiring for electrical, uh, air ventilations. You've got all of these physical components that are going inside the guts of your house, creating this strong structure. And your body is no different. Imagine trying to build a house if the materials stopped showing up at the building site. You wouldn't be building your house. So the same goes for your body when you, pro when you, when you um, 
deliver nutrients to the building site every single day, miracles happen because the body knows what to do with all of these different components. And so it's daily consumption. Does it mean that you're going to wake up on the beach, you know, in the Bahamas yeah. and have a mimosa, um, you know, uh, on your vacation and you skip your ultra 30 for a morning? Well, you can do that. You know, it's, it's a, you got to live your life, but when it comes to day in and day out and being consistent, that is the most important thing. And then last but not least beyond nutrition, let's just talk about some of the things that lie outside of this, that you guys can, to, can, can manage. And first and foremost, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. We all go through these various chapters in life, whether we lose a loved one or jobs change or relationships change or something happens in life. Just know that whatever your emotion is behind that, just embrace it and feel it and and know that it's not a sign of weakness or failure it's not there are things that come to us in life that are absolutely not your fault and and so just be present and stand strong in even in the chaos and knowing that how you're feeling is human and it's natural what you want to avoid is causing added stress depression anxiety for underlying causes and triggers Maybe things that, that you, that you haven't let go of, those are the things. And that goes into mindset, environment, and guarding your gate. Emotions, the mind is so powerful. And in a split second, your emotions can be absolutely swayed, whether it's happiness or it's sadness. What happens when we sit down and we watch a movie and it's a comedy, we could laugh. And that is a, that is just that whatever's happening on the screen invokes that emotion. Same thing with sadness. You could watch, you know, a sad storyline and cry and it's, it and, and movies are optional guys. <laughs> we're sitting here with our popcorn, eating the, watching these movies and we're invoking these emotions. That is how powerful the mind is when we see it and we hear it, it, it triggers different emotions. So I share that with you because it's also our job not to just feed the body with nutrients, but to also guard your mind and, and assess how you're feeling, uh, move through what you have control over because some things we don't have control over. Uh, and, and determine what can you control? What can you not control? Release what you can't control and move into what you do have control over. This will help to conquer overwhelming feelings and allow you to move through the situation, accomplish more tasks, um, you know, and, and move through your day, your week, and your months. All right, next on the list is maintain your, your routine. Routines are really important, and um, and it's because most successful people in this world have a routine. They get up early, they guard their hours of rest, and they get up early, and they have a structured day. If you structure your day, you will have so much more satisfaction in your day because you will see what you're getting accomplished and it will help to ease those feelings of anxiety and depression when you know that you're moving life forward even if, if it's organized at a slow pace you don't have to organize it at a fast pace uh, just organize it so that you are putting one foot in front of the other every day when it comes to taking care of yourself self-care as well as going and slaying it in business. So maintain your routine. And the other factor to this too is circadian uh, rhythm. Circadian rhythm is the rhythmic cycle of uh, sundown to, to sunrise and how your body is in sync with that. And when people stay up until two or three, three o'clock in the morning, when you should already be asleep in, in REM state and your body's repairing and charging for the next day, 
um, that's imperative. So that leads me to the next one and that's sleep. Make sure that you're sleeping seven, 7.5 hours a night. Too much sleep can also affect your mood. So watch out for that. So more is not better. Uh, the target is 7.7 7 to, to nine hours, but 7.5 is the magic number according to all of the sleep experts. So that means turn off your electrical devices be one hour before you, you go to bed. Get into soothing rituals and, and care for yourself. You have one life and one body. And if you need to rub some lavender oil on your temples and read a good book or have your babes scratch your back or um, soak in a bathtub or do something that's relaxing, do it and take care of yourself. If there are people that are listening to this or watching this and you're not self-caring, I am telling you right now, give yourself permission to do so. Life is so short and there is, there is no award that goes to people that sacrifice themselves so much to where it actually affects their health and, and robs them of their glass being half full. So take care of yourself, get your seven, 7.5 hours of sleep every night, sleep in a dark, cool room and get yourself, invest in a good pillow, invest in a pillow topper, invest in some things, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks to set yourself up with a, a, the most exquisite, luxurious hotel feel bed it, that, that, you know, five star that you, you need. So make some shifts and changes. And this is a day in day out thing, guys, you have to sleep every day. And also too, you can't make up on rest. They say that once it's lost, it's lost for good. So a nap doesn't matter. A nap is not going to fix it. So 7.5 hours. Uh, next is balanced meals, making sure that you're getting a, a, an array of uh, vegetables, lean proteins, uh, some whole grains. If you're gluten sensitive, watch your gluten. Uh, focus on your net carbohydrates for the day. You need carbs. Just how many carbs are you eating that's causing maybe, you know, insulin spiking or too much insulin production in the body that then leads into that inflammatory response that we talked about earlier. So make sure you're eating good balanced meals. Um, exercise. You don't have to be, I say this all the time, you don't have to become Arnold Schwarzenegger here, just exercise. 2.5 hours a week, 2.5 hours a week helps relieve both depression and anxiety according to studies. So that's like, you don't have to be 2.5 hours per day in the gym, just 2.5 hours per week. So if you want to, you can divide that into, you know, five sessions of walking. And what does that look like for you? So um, it could be that you, you hike or that you go bike or you garden because that's physical, right? So, um, and by all means, get yourself to the gym, hire a personal trainer and learn the ropes on how to work those machines and how to do resistant training to protect your elbows and shoulders. I'm telling you, it's worth every single penny because once you learn those things, you learn them for life. We talked about making relaxation and rest an absolute uh, must, um, and, and this could be cuddling your little pet. It could be um, you know, spending time in nature and grounding yourself or cooking or baking, whatever you're, you fully enjoy, that releases specific hormones in the body that really are incredible to the overall health and well-being and help to reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. Um, and reach out to loved ones. One of the, one of the main things that, that has been talked about most, and especially with the uptake and the uprising of social media, where people just sit there and scroll on Instagram and they see Joe and they see Sarah and they, oh, they're looking, they're like, oh, that's nice. They went to the park. Well, back in the day before social media, what did you do? You called Sarah like, oh, what did you do this week? Well, I took my kid to the park. Oh, you did. Which park did you go to? There was conversing and there was connection and, and it wasn't this display all on social media. So be very aware of that. Um, if it wasn't for social media, I wouldn't be watching my family, all my Australian family members have kids and watch their kids grow up. I'm grateful for, for that, right? But nobody should ever feel alone or isolated and, and being alone 
is more of an epidemic than it ever has been in the history of man. And it's because of social media. So get active, get, you know, join, join groups, um, set time for girls night, set time for guys night, set dates, pick up the phone and call your loved ones, your friends, and, and make sure that you're, you're connecting with people. Uh, last, but certainly not least is treatment. Therapy is incredible. And it used to be back in the day that if you ever asked for help, that people were ashamed because they thought that something was wrong with them and they thought that they were defective or that they, it was the loony bin approach. I'm telling you, it's not that at all. If life is bogging you down and weighing you down and you don't have someone that is of sound mind and that can literally help you to understand what's going on and give you the tools on how to navigate hairy situations, get someone in your life that can do that for you. I did that. I went through an insane change in my life two years ago. And it was devastating to me emotionally. It was the severing of a family relationship. And I did not know how to navigate. Sorry, I just got muted. Was that on purpose? Okay. Um, I didn't know how to navigate. So I absolutely did uh, about probably six therapy sessions. It was the best thing I could ever do because I was able to identify what was happening. I was able to identify like nar what narcissism is and, and all of these different things that it, that, so I was like, so I'm not crazy. I'm like, you know, like it's really, I, I, I encourage you that if you do need to sort and sift and, and on your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences to gain strength, to gain knowledge and to navigate that, go for it. It's worth every penny because you're investing in yourself. Um, just choose carefully who you go to. And there's, and it might be that you have to interview and consult with five different therapists in order to find your, your person and, and, uh, and move through that. Um, and then last but not least, again, I mean, there are certain people that absolutely due to uh, under functioning certain um, biochemical processes in the body have to go medication route. And there's no shame in that either. It's just that have you exhausted all natural components first? That's the question. And if you have, and you're doing everything right, then that's where medication is, comes in handy. And it can really, really lend to uh, some really good positive effects. So um, with that, let's, let's open it up to some questions and see what we've got going on here and, um, and further the discussion. Okay, I love it. I haven't seen any um, questions come through that weren't answered by someone else in the chat. So who has a question? Like, let's kind of turn in, this into a little bit of a discussion. Um, Gina, I know that you talked to Kirsty earlier today and I know at the same time, you were the one that had us all come up with this, you know, this topic of conversation. And so I'm just wondering, first of all, let's go to you, see if you have any questions around any of this, and we'll go to Janie after that. Um, I don't have any questions per se, but as she was talking, then I was thinking of somebody, I have somebody in mind, a friend who's dealing with some things with her son. It's an adult son. And so again, you know, it was just kind of thinking of things and having these discussions are really good because that's when you start thinking of people, right? The whole point is who, who could use these products? Well, we know everybody can use the products, but it, it comes to mind about specific um, people you can talk to and like this video, right? We're going to be able to share it. So then they can get the information them, themselves and hear it. It's not, you know, us, we don't have to remember what she said or whatever. So I really appreciate it from that standpoint as well. 
That's wonderful. Thank you, Gina. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Janie. Hey, thank you so much. So um, I have a question about the 4285, Kirsty. You were talking about that and about, um, I was really interested in the percentages that you were sharing and mm -hmm. I just couldn't get it down fast enough. Uh, on for the fortitude and with the sensorial ashwagandha? Um, yeah, and those four capsules. So I had sleep and stress. I mean, I, and yeah. then so re, so a reduction of overall stress by 62%, improved ability to go to sleep by 70%, reduced fatigue by 53%, and then uh, the lowering of cortisol by four times. And the lower the lowering of CRP levels, which are inflammation biomarkers, CRP levels by two times. There's the other way to get that in an image. Here, let me just copy paste this. I'm gonna, and I'm going to put it in the in the notes, so you guys can have this. Does anyone know how to grab them from the notes and share the love in the groups? Oh, really? You can't copy paste? Um, not that I know of. Robert, do you know if we can copy paste an image? Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, you just take your cursor and you can highlight it blue and copy. Oh, yep. It's not an image. It's just words. Got it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. I love that. Yes. Okay. Um, Pam, let's go to you, Pam. Well, I had a question, and it's just out of curiosity. Is it better to spread out that two and a half hours a week of exercise once a week, like you're going on a major hike? Yeah. Um, you know, two and a half hours is, it, it was scientifically proven that you can move the needle with two and a half hours per week, which is so minimal guys, right? Doesn't that really shift your, your whole perception on, on movement and exercise? It's amazing to me. Um, so whether you do it all at once or spread it out throughout the week, I don't really think it matters. I think, cause it's, it's eliciting some sort of biochemical reaction or response in the body and, um, and moving your body. We know your body is designed to move. It is designed to move. It wants to move. It's just, you have to think like, do I want, am I going to move my body? So I, yeah, I think, it, I think that more than two and a half hours is better. Um, but for bare minimum sake. 2.5 hours. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, if Pam, for add, that question. Oh, um, Jim, yes. Yeah. Just one thought. That moving thing is how you move your lymphatics, which is the garbage collector and moving the garbage out of the body. If you do not move, you will become more and more toxic, believe it or not, because you mm -hmm. aren't moving the garbage out. So moving is absolutely genius if we realize how many benefits we get from that two and a half hours or raise it to three. Yeah. I love awesome. that. Thank you. Okay, Robert, and then we'll go to Swayze. Hey, Kiersey, awesome call as always. Love you. Um, I, I, a quick question. I, I, I'm all, always, my mind go, immediately goes to somebody may be struggling with one or more of these concerns that emotionally related and just off the cuff i'm not, not looking for a deep answer here but like if you go if you if you in your mind's eye run through our product line in your mind like from the most impactful down as far as emotions hormones etc could you give us a little quick little rating there in your opinion oh yeah oh yeah well number one ultra 30. number two Biome Sync Daily, and number three, Fortitude 85. Ultra Biome and Fortitude. Okay. Yep. Those three absolute musts. And, and we've got inc incredible testimonials of mood support um, yep. after just three weeks. And Robert, I believe one of them is in your team um, of just one shake a day and one biome daily a day. It's, it's crazy. Um, amazing stuff. So uh, imagine what fortitude would do. 
know? So, yeah. I got goosebumps again. Thank you, Kirsty. Yes. <laughs> And that's so good to know as well, because, you know, some people, if they say, I only have $200 or whatever to start, mm -hmm. right? And they have some of these symptoms, then those are the three formulations to start them on. So thank yes, you yes. for that, for yes. sure. Great question, yes. Robert. Okay, Sways, you're up, babe. Okay, so how much, how much is too much of Fortitude 85? Because... <laughs> I have taken like 10 in one day. I'm not kidding you, <laughs> Yeah. but I needed it. So I'm mm -hmm. just like, I don't want to overdo it because my normal yeah. is probably usually about six a day. Mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. So. And you know what? This is all so individualized and you know, the, the base based on clinical studies with our ingredients that are clinically proven to do something specific in the body. Um, the dose is four per day. But if you are heightened stress, heightened chronic stress, like acute stress too, because it could be a massive study that you're cramming for uh, or a massive test, right? That you're cramming for. It could be that you have a trip that's coming up with a, a not so friendly person. I don't know, right? <laughs> so it could, it could be a lot of different triggers. Figure out what your triggers are. Though That's more acute, but the chronic, you know, it's it could be like, uh, day in and day out chapter and you, you know, it could be for a time you need more. So dose up and, and do what feels best for some people. It's five for some people. It's six, 10 is really, really a lot girl. <laughs> so, because don't, don't forget that our, our, um, formulations are highly concentrated. You know, I think everybody's so used to like this whole diluted effect with, with supplements. And it's just like, like for instance, you can buy 100% pure aloe vera juice and it's 1% aloe, 99% water. Like, you know, that's a good example. So, so we don't do that here. Um, it really is highly, highly concentrated botanicals. And, um, and, you know, if there is cause for increased concentrations, we'll do it based on science. But as of right now, everything is dialed in um, to a clinical dose and, uh, and you shouldn't really need extra unless you are larger body mass, acute stress or chronic high levels of chronic stress. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Okay. There was a question that came in. Um, what about COVID hair loss? What can we do for COVID hair loss? I know that I didn't have any COVID hair loss when I, cause I was on all the formulations and the collagen. Um, but are there any specific things that you would recommend to people for that? Yes. And you know, what's interesting is my mom was hospitalized for 11 days in ICU with COVID and she received remdesivir, which is uh, kind of, it's one of the medications that's standard protocol in hospitals these days. And they don't ask you if you want it they just administer it to you. And it is very hard on the kidneys. And those that do receive remdesivir do suffer substantial hair loss. Um, but COVID in and of itself can cause hair loss. And um, it's just trauma and stress on the body is what's happening. Um, the best thing that you can do is to uh, supplement daily and take collagen 300. I'm telling you, I can't get over all of my new hair. It's kind of a pain in the buns because it's, it just pops up and I'm like, Oh, get down, you know, get, get back down there. So you, I'm, you know, you got to use a little hairspray, a little gel, whatever, but, um, my goodness, I love it. I just absolutely love the collagen 300. Uh, there are certain components that you need to be able to help with, um, uh, blood flow and, and getting nutrients specifically to, uh, the roots and to the hair follicles. So, um, it just, just keep, keep on keeping on. Um, and you know, sometimes even if you're supplementing with Salevo and have been, and you, you got COVID and you're running into hair loss, just hang tight and guaranteed it could have been worse had you not been taking care of yourself and supplementing with the absolute best because uh, those components, those nutrient components will help the body during that state of crisis. So 
do the okay. trifecta every day. Yes. It's my favorite for yes. sure. Yes. Um, okay. You Donna, I'm going to have you explain your question. And while you're doing that, let's go really quick to this question. Is there a certain time of day to maximize the effectiveness for anxiety and depression with the four to two to 85? Like, is there a certain time of day that you recommend? Yes. I love this question. Who asked that question? Candy um, dandy. Candy. Um, so here's the deal and we're at the top of the hour. So maybe we'll do one more question after this, Jill. Yep. You done us um, up after this. Okay. So timing is, is very critical, um, for your first thing in the morning. What's really, really interesting is that take your biomes at night before bed, they'll colonize throughout the night because it's the, it's the longest window without eating. Cause, cause you have better colonization when it doesn't interfere with food. Right. So take your biomes at night. I love that. Then you, then all of a sudden at about four o'clock in the morning, based on the earth's circadian rhythm that is connected to your body, all of a sudden the liver releases glycogen out into the body, which causes a little bit of insulin reaction. And all of a sudden, and you're sleeping. So the, so the liver releases glycogen and insulin shows up, shuttles the glycogen into your muscles in hopes that you get up around six o'clock in the morning and put your feet on the ground. And all of a sudden your muscles have been pre-fueled and preloaded with glycogen for energy, for energy. That's why they say exercise in the morning on an empty stomach, because you don't need food because your body just shuttled glucose into your muscle for exercise. And then uh, after exercise, you fuel with an ultra 30 shake for post recovery. If you exercise straight out of the gate in the morning for, you know, 45 minutes or so, and, and you follow it with uh, an ultra 30 shake, you're within your two hour window of waking. And we've been taught a pretty cool thing that when your eyelids flutter open and light penetrates in through your pupil, it sends a signal to the brain to start to produce serotonin, but the brain is connected to the gut. So your brain will produce some serotonin, but the majority of your serotonin is produced in the gut. So biomes at night feeding into healthy gut balance so that you've got that big push of serotonin in the gut, but it requires amino acids. So uh, having ultra 30 first thing in the morning within two hours of waking post exercise is the most ideal thing you could ever do in your morning routine besides brushing your teeth. So it and showering, right? So, um, it is, it's a, it, that's, that would be the best place for an ultra 30. And then of course you can have another ultra 30 for lunch, or you can have one for dinner, um, or, and do a, a meal for your, for your, your lunch, um, but the goal is, is to try to condense as much of your proteins and nutrients into one sitting and hitting the threshold, which is 30 to 40 grams of protein per sitting and spacing your meals out as far as you can stretch them based on your, your macro needs so that you shut your insulin response off. People that snack all the time, they're constantly triggering insulin and that drives inflammatory response in the body. And, and it lends into insulin resistance. So just shut your insulin off for just one second and, and focus on your, your meal pacing and your protein pacing, but don't just sit there and snack all day or every hour or two, because you want to be able to shut that insulin uh, production off uh, for the majority uh, in between your meals, your, your, your windows of eating. So hopefully that answers your question, but pacing all of that in uh, four to two to 85, first thing in the morning, I'm telling you before you work out pop those capsules in there, go hit your workout, then fuel with your ultra 30. Um, because as soon as your mind starts cranking on daily tasks and relationship stuff and finances and whatever's going on in your mind, that's when fortitude is needed because it's, it's designed to come in and, and combat the negative harmful effects that the body can have through that stress. Awesome. Okay. I was just, thank you for that. I was just looking at a, um, a question and then we need to wrap up. A VIP was advised against fortitude 85. Um, where did that go? Because of the basal 
leaf and her hypothyroidism. I told her I would ask Kirsty's thoughts on this. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, Kara Thorpe message me that so I can do a little bit of research. Cause I'm not going to answer that right now. I want to, I want to see what the, uh, the hypothesis is on that and why that would be, or the science. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. And you Donna says she didn't need to ask her questions. So with that, we are going to wrap up tonight's call and Kirsty, thank you for yes. your knowledge, your goodness. And just so you know, once a month, we're going to be having a health talk like this, um, you know, from Kirsty or Jim or, or somebody, um, one of the um, Zalabel Labs team, you know, Dr. Harper, Dr. Messina, um, and I'm excited for that. So Kirsty, thank you for being so gracious and, and for your for all your goodness and all of your knowledge. And so Robert, if you want to um, stop the recording on this, and then we have a couple of announcements and then we want to bid Kirsty farewell with all of our love and so many comments coming through Kirsty. So thank you.